it's not hard to work out why people live here. It's such a great place to live. And from a cycling point of view, it's such a great place to live for cycling because it's quiet roads, um, you know, idyllic riding, good mixture of both mountain biking and, um, and road riding. It's an easy two and a half hour ride to Adelaide through the hills, which is beautiful. I am a solicitor and a barrister. South Australia has maintained a combined profession, so I do both soliciting and barristering. I own um, Hoyts and Rotors Lawyers, which is here in Tanunda in the main street. It's got the ideal location for me. It's next to the bike shop, it's got the pub on the other side, and the courts across the road. What more could a lawyer want? <laughs> what more could a bike riding lawyer want? Did a little bit of racing as a, a school, just in school boy racing and then didn't really pursue racing as a young man, but did a lot of touring. So I rode, took a year off from university and, um, and rode from Brisbane to Darwin, and then up through Thailand, Malaysia and Thailand, and then spent four and a half months touring in Japan. Bit of a Perry Breast Perry tragic, I'm afraid. It's just one of those things I spent so long, I guess, dedicating myself. I did it first in 1995 and did a good time and thought, yeah, look, I could I could have a serious crack at this. I knew Sir Hubert Offerman had set the fastest time by an Australian in 1931 when it was, and always claimed that was his greatest victory. So I figured that my aim was to try and beat his time. That was my, my aim. So that was basically doing it in roughly 48 hours. His time was 49 hours 20. Um, it's like a like a road race for two days and two nights. So you start at 4 p.m. So you basically ride through the first night and um, and get to the turnaround point at Brest um, around sort of midday the next day. Um, and then the critical part of, of that ride is the second night, um, and I could never. I could never get through the second night with at least stopping or without stopping for at least a power nap. I just couldn't. I couldn't ride for two days and, and two nights without having some brief shut eye. So, Jeez. so in '99 when I set that record, I had to um, drop off the lead group after about the 800k point, just coming up to midnight on the on the second night. I just couldn't stay awake, and I was worried about crashing or causing a crash in the group. So I just had to stop. 10 minute power nap and then keep going and I had to do three of those to get through the second night so I probably started the event at about 75 kilos um, 85 kilos now um, and I reckon when I finished the event I probably would have been maybe 70 kilos I've got a photograph and <laughs> it is skin and bone it doesn't look nice <laughs> I find um, when I was working part-time as a lawyer I found the writing that I was doing then was great from a sort of um, problem solving point of view. I often felt I should be charging on a time basis when I was writing and thinking about work issues. I definitely find that writing is great to yeah, clear the mind, it's great problem solving, the, the rhythmic nature of it I find very conducive to getting into a sort of meditative state and, and it allows, you know, especially when you're not having to concentrate on traffic and if you're out on an open road. Um, where you can just sort of switch off and go into autopilot yeah. Um, and yeah the things that you think about and the way you think about things is is really helpful. I have a little mantra every day without a car is a good day. 